and this was the greatest coral quality site on the Great Barrier Reef that I knew. It was the perfect coral garden, it was the perfect reef. And that's all been taken away. In a way, this is like diving into the future. I'm approaching this with some trepidation. I'm quite fearful that we'll see really serious damage down there. Once underwater, we begin exploring the damage on a reef off Port Douglas. All this coral was alive only just a few months ago, and yet we're now seeing the impacts of extensive bleaching. You can see the bleached coral, that looks white. Those corals are dying or very sick. If they do die, they then get covered in a dark brown algae. All that dark brown stuff you see is dead. So I went in with a bit of trepidation and it was pretty awful actually. There are still some pockets of healthy coral, but there's a lot of it that's been very badly damaged. My first impressions of what is out there is complete devastation. When I emerged from that watery world up into this boat, my first feelings, quite frankly, were ones of intense anger. If the average Australian could have seen what I've seen today, they would be absolutely outraged. There's branching corals, there's plate corals, there's the massive corals like brain corals and so forth, a huge diversity of species with a large percentage of those corals, in some places up to 90%, either dead dying or very sick. It's an unmitigated catastrophe what is unfolding now. It's almost like we're seeing the reef in a life and death struggle. I've been coming to this site for about 10 years and the sites really do end up being your backyard. They, they almost become old friends. And uh, to come and see this old friend today uh, in a very sick state, it's in real trouble. If the reef dies, then it's a total ecological collapse mm. and all the fish would go as well. So it will be the commercial fishing, mm. the recreational fishing yeah. and the tourism industry will all suffer. This is serious business for Queensland and Australia. Economically, tourism is a major driving force for any business operator which is the majority of Australia. Your neck is on the line. You can't make a mistake. Obviously it's very alarming to think of the reef being dead, but it is a wake-up call. We can't keep repeatedly pressurising a natural environment and expect it to be there forever. The reef is a, an amazingly important economic asset. It employs over 69,000 people. On top of that, it generates something like $5.6 billion for the Australian economy. This bleaching event is happening because these organisms are being shocked by extraordinarily high surface temperatures this is caused by the greenhouse gases that are being poured into the atmosphere from the burning of coal and other fossil fuels. This is an extreme global event that has surprised us in its extent, its size, and how fast this is actually occurring. When you look at this, this is all dead, right? And so that's what we're seeing more and more of this year, and we really fear for some reefs that may lose as much as 90% of their corals. So there are people who will say, oh, you know, it's happened before, you know, coral reefs will bounce back and so on. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case for large parts of the reef. We've got to nail right now the underlying reason for these events. If we can do that, and it's literally the last call, we will save the Great Barrier Reef for future generations. The one thing that I come away from this experience absolutely convinced of is that this has to be the reef election. We need to put the fate of the Great Barrier Reef front and centre. We need to wean ourselves off coal and we need to do it incredibly quickly. Otherwise, future generations are going to miss the opportunity completely of seeing this extraordinary place, Australia's Great Barrier Reef.